Let's get a quick take on Denver becoming the first U.S. city in the nation to essentially de decriminalize psychedelic mushrooms containing psilocybin. After closing an early vote count deficit this week, it looks like Initiative 301 is set to pass with 50.6% of the vote. Panic Cahoon from Westward, this was a squeaker of a vote, one that uh, was, it, 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 when we went to sleep on Tuesday night, it did not look like 301 was going to pass, and they have yet to be, be made official, but all the votes have been counted. Did this one surprise you? No. I think I actually said it was going to get it in a squeaker. And, of course, I do reside in the part, uh, in an office where everyone was pro this vote. But my reporter who was there, I loved it. At 1 in the morning when they finally gave up because there weren't going to be no more results announced that night. And the supporters were still very optimistic, which is stoners are really tardy. They procrastinate. They forgot to vote till late, which in a lot of ways is probably true. And, of course, given our amount of marijuana coverage, we know that stoner writers are also late, too. <laughs> Michael Fields, Executive Director at Colorado Rising Actions. Great to have you back on the panel. Uh, Michael, is Denver more libertarian than we think it is? I think it shows that. I mean, you look back, uh, 2007, I think it was, uh, it decriminalized weed to start with. It's kind of uh, leading Colorado in that way. I was surprised uh, mainly because it had a comeback. I mean, I went to bed. I'm like, this thing lost. Um, and, you know, I think this is really a... A, a solution looking for a problem. Um, you know, this is something that, uh, you know, isn't really, you have 10,000 cases of drug, you know, charges and 11 of them are about this. So I think, you know, I think you look at um, the law enforcement, they're unsure what's going to happen. I think it could be a mess, uh, you know, when you actually come to enforcement. But uh, Denver is definitely leading the way in, in some kind of libertarian thinking. Eric Sonderman, political analyst, do you see any other cities looking at this either as motivation to uh, square up and then say, well, let me make sure this doesn't happen in our city? Or uh, on the other side of things saying, hey, you know, maybe this is part of that, uh, you know, making sure the prison overcrowding of all the different people who are there for psychedelic mushrooms, all 11 of them have been uh, charged, uh, are not clogging up our judicial system. Where does this go from here? I'm not sure other cities look to it, but the real thing is the city of Denver didn't look to it. A few people look to it and petition it on the ballot, and Denver has easy ballot access uh, to get stuff like this on the ballot. And there's no doubt in my mind that there'll be five people in Seattle or Portland or, you know, who knows? It doesn't have to be just those hip cities. Maybe it's Columbus, Ohio, uh, who, who put something like this on the ballot before too many years go by. I think it's great in the sense of the Denver brand was getting, you know, which is so heavy now around legalized pot, it needed a freshener. So now we have a brand freshener going on, and, you know, the late night talk show hosts can, can have some more fun at our expense. Megan Schrader, editorial page editor at the Denver Post. Uh, we are certainly, as a city, no stranger to getting uh, teased on uh, late night talk show hosts. I think it was uh, James Corden last night said that, you know, truly maybe recreational marijuana was a gateway drug. Now we're off to magic <laughs> mushrooms. Uh, what do you think about the, the, the state of Denver's big vote on magic mushrooms? Um, it, it's certainly unique. Uh, I've never done shrooms, but I cannot imagine that they're anywhere close to the effect of marijuana, right? I think it's a whole new level up, it, the psychedelic effects of this drug. So if you're going to compare it to marijuana, I think it's a big, a big leap. Um, and thankfully, it's a big leap from this decriminal, decriminalization to legalization, right? It, we're a long ways from that, too. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be any sort of mushroom shops open up anytime soon, but, right. but you never know. You know people, people, people thought about a pod maybe about 20 years ago, so we'll Give it see. five years. That's true. <laughs> Red Rocks will never be the same.